Hey everybody, my name's Flex, and welcome to my second installment of Dynamic VTuber Lighting Tutorials, the last of which was heavily based off of a plugin called StreamFX. Since I posted that video a while back, I have updated to OBS 29, and StreamFX it has become paywalled slash there's like some drama going around with this whole situation. I don't know, I can't speak much to that. But today I do have a new way to do this without using StreamFX kind of. This is going to be as no bullshit as possible, but I tend to talk a lot. So if you don't want to hear me, please use the timestamps in the description. They are always there. One thing to note is that everything that I mentioned in this video will have a link, but if the links in the description don't work, it's because this account is new. This isn't my main account. This is my tutorials account. So if links don't work, go ahead and check the comments down below where I probably have left a pinned comment with actual hyperlinks. First things first, let's talk requirements, prerequisites, whatever you may call it. Make sure that your OBS is updated to 29 minimum. I am using 29.0.2 in this video. Also, make sure that your VTuber is capable of transparent capture. This can either be any form of transparency capture or you can also use a green screen and key it out with a filter. In this video, I'm going to be using Spout 2 Capture, which is the current standard for VTube Studio specifically. If you don't know how to get that set up, I do have a video on my channel of how to do that. It's much lighter on your CPU and I highly recommend swapping over to it if you haven't already. Now, as far as plugins go, we're going going to need two plugins today. The first one is going to be Source Clone by Exeldro, and the second one is actually part of StreamFX. That's why I said this is kind of without StreamFX. We're not technically using the full plugin. We're only using one part of it, which is the blur filter, which was pulled by PRG Mitchell. I'm not going to show you how to install these. They're pretty straightforward. Download them and install them. If they give you a warning that says don't run, just run anyway. It's pretty straightforward. And once you have those ready to go, go ahead and open up OBS. Please note that I'm going to be talking about nested scenes and source clones in this video. And if you don't know what any of that means, I do talk a little bit more about it in the old video if you wanna check that out, but I'm not going to be going over that. So if you're super, super confused as to what's going on, please just go watch the section where I explain that in my old video. But let's go ahead and hop into OBS. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and make our base gaming scene. So I'm going to rename this real fast. I'm just going to name it list of games. And in here, this is where you would be putting your Genshin Impact, your Valorant, you know, whatever you've been playing these days. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to open an actual game. I'm going to add some placeholder images. So we've got a sample of something that's very vibrant and colorful a completely black background, and then a completely white background. And between the three of these, you're representing pretty much all of the lighting scenarios that you could be in. I highly recommend doing this because then you don't have to have a game open while you're working on this to be able to test how the lighting looks for you. Okay, next up, we're going to make another scene that's going to have all of our avatars in it. I'm just going to name this VTubers Master List. So for right now, I'm just going to add two windows. The first one is going to be a capture of my PNG tuber. So my PNG tuber has been added. Then I'm also going to go ahead and add a spot two capture. My spot two capture title is messed up. Just ignore the fact that it's called source name because <laughs> I put the data in the wrong folder. We don't talk about it. If you're using spot two capture, by the way, make sure it's set to default. And now we have our VTuber ready. If you're using something that uses a green screen at this point in time, make sure that you go ahead and click on the filter section and go ahead and add in a chroma key or a color key, whichever you use. So starting here, we're gonna get into the bulk part of the tutorial where we're gonna make our lighting scene and we're gonna make a mock version of the dynamic mask filter from StreamFX by using blending modes. This is something that I picked up from Nutty, who if you don't follow and you like to do cool OBS shit, what are you doing? He's the king of cool OBS shit. But you should totally go check them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new scene and we're going to go ahead and call this lighting scene. And then we're going to right click and we're going to add a source clone and we're going to name this current game blur. We're going to set this to our list of games. Also, I'm turning off the audio because it's unnecessary. So now we have the exact same thing that is in our list of games here. Now note if we like, for example, turn off this top one and go back here, you can see that it's replicating what's visible in that scene. So now up next, we're going to have to blur this. So we're going to click on filters right here. And then we are going to right click and we're going to add a blur. Set this to dual filtering, and then you'll probably have to play around with this later in the video. I'll explain why, but a good starting point is eight or nine. I'm just gonna leave it at nine. 
and the result is this nice blurred version of our main scene. Now, if you don't know how clipping masks work or masks work in general, basically what we're doing is we're trying to get this image, this opaque kind of blur to be cut out just in the shape of our avatar. So first things first, we're going to create a source clone. Again, it's always a source clone. And we're going to name this our VTuber clone. We're going to set this to our VTuber master list. The reason why we did this whole like nested VTuber thing is if you have multiple different VTubers that you use, perhaps like a PNG tuber to swap over to, it's easier to just access them all in one place than having to redo this for every single one of them. So that's why I do it that way. Go ahead and hit okay. And now your scene should look like this. It should be the blur with your VTuber on top. Now, because we want the blur to take the shape of our avatar, we're going to go ahead and put it above. So down here, go ahead and move this on top of the VTuber. VTuber is going to disappear and we're going to right click. Let me zoom in again. <laughs> we're going to right click and we're going to change the blending mode on this to multiply. So now it's going to basically wash that color over our VTuber. You can already see the effect taking place and it looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and make our main gaming scene now. So while you aren't looking, I went ahead and made like a super overlay just for the purpose of this video, but we're going to go ahead and right click and add a new scene. And this is going to be our main scene. So I'm just going to name it main scene. You could name it like stream scene or something like that, whatever makes the most sense to you. I'm just gonna put it at the top. And now we're gonna start building our main scene. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and replicate whatever game I'm currently playing. So that's gonna be, uh, you guessed it, a source clone. We're gonna name this current game. And we're going to set this to our list of games. Now we're also going to add our overlay or, you know, whatever. If you have alerts or something like that, you probably want to put those all in one place and then replicate them in here. That's what I do at least. So I'm going to source clone this. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And then last but not least, we're also going to add our new lighting scene on top of this. So we're going to right click and we are going to add, you guessed it, another fucking source clone. We're going to name this VTuber with lighting. And of course a clone is going to be our, where is it, lighting scene. Great. Okay, now you'll notice it already like, it did this cast thing, right? Cause it's casting everything that's in this scene, including this black that's in the background, right? So this is all this black and the game scene, the current game blur is getting cast over the black as well. So how do we remove the black and make it kind of like transparent where the black is? You go ahead and click the VTuber with lighting and we're going to set the blending method to sRGB off and that will remove anywhere that has that dark black cast. So that's it for the main part of the tutorial. If this is all you wanted and you just wanted this to be without having to set it up in VTube Studio, perfect, you're done. But if you wanna do the backlight and if you wanna get some tweaks done to make it look really nice and clean, let's go ahead and start working on that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is gonna be the shadow slash the actual backlight. So let's start by going back into the lighting scene here. And we're gonna go ahead and add a new <laughs> source clone again. We're gonna name this VTuber Shadow. And we're going to clone again our VTuber master list. No audio. So now we have our VTuber shadow up on top of everything as well. Right now it just looks normal, obviously because we haven't made any adjustments to it yet. So let's go ahead and fix this up. We're going to add a filter on this, a couple of filters actually. First, we're gonna add a blur filter and you can set this to Gaussian and probably just leave it around five is probably good enough. And we're also going to right click and then we're going to add a color correction filter and this is gonna be what turns this into a shadow. We're just gonna knock the brightness all the way down to nothing. So if you look over here on the side, you can see that now the VTuber is just completely blacked out, which is obviously not what we want. So we're going to also pull the opacity down just a tad. You can play with this however you want it. I think I keep mine actually pretty low, like 0.5 or something like that. Now. You're like, wait, but this just looks the same. Well, you actually have to move the entire source a little bit over. So I'm going to pull it down into the right just a tad. And you can see it starts making that kind of rim light effect now. So that's all it takes to add the shadow in. And if we look at our main scene, we can now see the shadow. The problem is the shadow is being cast over everything and not just over our shape. So we're going to have to right click the VTuber shadow and do the same thing that we did before, which is we're gonna change the blending mode to multiply. 
And now it's going to be cast only over this mask, this faux mask that we've created. All right, so we're almost done. We do have a little bit more tweaking to do, but before we continue on, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you are enjoying this video and if you like videos like this and tutorials like this, please follow me here on my main channel as well and also on Twitch. I am less boring in other places than my tutorials channel, so come and hang out sometime. All right, so next up we have a problem to address and that is if we go into our list of games and we turn off our, our actual game scene here and we have a black background, say this is like a loading screen or something like that. If we load into a black background and we go back to our main scene, we're invisible. And that's because it's multiplying completely black on top of you, which just makes your character completely blacked out going to go back to our lighting scene and we're going to go to our current game blur and we're going to open up the filters on this and we're going to also add a color correction on this one as well and here we're just going to pull the opacity down you can see i phase into existence there <laughs> we just need to pull it down a little bit and this is basically at the absolute darkest possible that your screen is this is how much light is going to be filtered through so pick at your discretion whichever you want you know if i keep mine decently low <laughs> and now it'll be fixed so if you look you can tell the background is completely black but we are actually showing up it doesn't matter if it's super super dark it'll still let light in so the only downside to this entire method of course is that it is a multiply layer which means that you can never have like super bright brights, unfortunately. Well, maybe you can if you do some weird work around, but case in point being, it's really hard to get the same level of vibrancy that you would have had with the stream effects method. What I mean by that is if you open up this super bright background, it's not dark, dark per se, but it's not as vibrant as it could be. And so we can go ahead and make some adjustments to that. So once again, we're gonna go back to our lighting scene and back to the gaming blur again. We're gonna go to filters and we're going to add in a LUT. Now, if you don't know what a LUT is, it's basically just like a thing that tells the colors how to change the colors. <laughs> But basically the problem at hand is that we're letting in all of the light at the same level and it's all being multiplied, which means that the very light lights are becoming darks and the very dark darks are becoming like black, right? So we can kind of adjust this by applying a LUT that pulls all of the super dark darks up to kind of like mids pulls the mids up maybe a little bit to the lights and then keeps the lights pretty light because we want everything to maintain its color pretty well. So I'm going to use a LUT that I made. I will link this in like a, I don't know, a free like coffee download or something like that in the description so y'all can have it. It's nothing special, but I just made this. And as you can see, when I turn the LUT on versus off, it basically just brightens everything up a little bit, but it maintains the color for the most part. Okay, so I went ahead and found a video of my friend and I doing some achievements. I'm gonna go ahead and press play because there's a lot of colors happening here, and I just want you to be able to see the difference between with the LUT and without the LUT. And you can see if I turn off the LUT, it prevents a lot of the fun colors from coming through. When I turn it back on, it's very vibrant, but it's not too obnoxious. Again, difference without, and then with it. You can also play around with like the saturation and everything here if you want. Um, again, I'll be providing the LUT in the download somewhere if you would like to use this, but I think this really helps pull up a lot of the super dark tones so that you can still get a, a nice amount of color in without it being too dark and without it being too bright. So if I come over here and I go into my VTubers master list and I swap out my Spout 2 for my PNG tuber. Why is my PNG tuber like that? That's not my PNG tuber. The fuck? Hang on. <laughs> so I fixed that. Now my PNG tuber is working. And if I go back to my main scene, you can now see that my PNG tuber actually has the lighting on it as well. Anyway, that is it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something new today. If not, <laughs> sorry, <fuck> you. <laughs> if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments and I will try to get to them as soon as possible. Again, this is not my main channel. I do have another channel and it's probably plastered everywhere. So make sure to subscribe to both of those and hopefully stop by a Twitch stream as well. Anyway, take care, drink some water, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.